everybody, I'm Cassandra from the blog Craft to Believe After and I'm so excited to be chatting to you guys again today. Um, as some of you may have known, I had my family here. Uh, my parents arrived on the 11th of July. They were here for a month visiting from South Africa. And then on the 30th of July, my brother and my sister-in-law and their two kids, uh, they popped over from uh, the UK. They visited for a week. So in our tiny apartment, we were packed like a bunch of sardines. So it was it was very difficult to um, get almost any crochet time and even more difficult to be able to do a video. So I've really missed uh, chatting to you all. I've I'm still busy catching up on videos, uh, you know, from some of my favorite YouTubers that I'm now so far behind. I don't know how I'll catch up on all the videos, but visiting with family is always fun. So I can't say anything about that. Um, but what I can say is that it is very nice uh, to be back in front of the camera. It's very nice to be chatting to all of you again. Um, and let's just get going to what I've got to show you. So obviously this is not going to be a very, very long video. I don't have a ton of projects to show you, but I will show you what I have been busy with the last two weeks. The first thing, and you would have seen it on Crystal from Chronically Crocheting's uh, YouTube channel, her, one, her, her most recent video, I think she uh, showed all the Mr. Box a lot that a few of us who tested the pattern for her made. So her Mr. Box lot, very cute. I'll show you my uh, test copy of the pattern just now. It is already available in her Etsy shop. I'll link that down below. It's a very, very affordable. Um, so pop over, she's got a few very, very cute patterns. I think you guys will love it, but I'll chat you about the pattern now. But let me show you Mr. Box a lot. So this is the version that I made. So I'll talk to you about the yarn just now. So this is him, his little tail, very cute little bend. Uh, and this is him. I think he's so cute. My daughter has actually, she's already claimed him. Um, so it's, <laughs> it's a long wait for her because I didn't have time to do a video yet. And she really wants to take him. So this will go to her right after the video. But let me just chat to you about the yarn I used first. I'll give you some, uh, just tell you what I um, did differently. Uh, not from the pattern, but a suggestion in the pattern. Um, first, the yarn I used, because when Crystal asked us to test the pattern, she mentioned that she uses or she used for her pattern a five weight yarn and then a four weight for I think only the eyes and the tongue. Now I don't have five weight yarn at all. I think I've got I think one or two that I got in my crochet society boxes. It's not a yarn I work with um, at all. Uh, for those of you who've been watching me for a bit you know that I am a fingering weight yarn gal. I love the thinner weight yarns for my omegarumis. So I really did not have at all uh, thick enough yarn. I did have the four weight that I'm busy with my granny square, uh, my granny squares that I'm using to make my sweater, the project that my mom and I did. So I've got some four weight yarn, I've got some three weight yarn, but none of them spoke to me uh, for this pattern. It needed something special. So of course I decided that I had to order something um, and I ended up ordering this hobby baby snuggle so it's a type of uh, velvet it's a velvet yarn now I don't like specifically working with velvet yarns and I haven't worked with it a ton before I think I did um, a reindeer uh, kit from one and two company um, and the reindeer is made out of velvet yarn I do find it once you start going I mean the crocheting part is lovely um, but making magic circles and, you know, there's fluff all over the place. Like, if you try to attach limbs. Now, if any of you can give me a tip on attaching limbs. 
with velvet yarn. Please put them in the comments because I had a massive, massive struggle, especially with larger parts like his little muzzle, which obviously took a, a bit more uh, yarn. So I had enough yarn to work around. But as soon as you start uh, trying to attach it, folks, it fluffs, the fluff comes up like this. You now it just, it peels off in little bunches. I don't know if you can see, sorry, you cannot see, but you get the idea. So it fluffs up and you have these little cords. Oh, I had such a struggle. So it goes all right for small parts. So for instance, the ears and the tail, which is a, a small little piece that you have to sew. I managed it fine. But on the snout, I had to attach, uh, I had to fasten off like halfway and then continue with it because of the, you know, as soon as you pull it through something tight, the yarn, uh, as you would do with stitching, it just started making these little, you know, it would tear off little clumps and it would have these little gaps all over the place. Now you can't see it. I'm so sorry there. It's like that. So that was very frustrating for me, but it will not stop me from using this yarn in the future. So I've got a few different colors. Not, I didn't buy a ton of it um, because it's not the type of yarn I would use regularly. But I really did enjoy the end product of Mr. Boxlot. I think he's absolutely lovely in this yarn. So let me just tell you the colors. So I used the Baby Snuggle, which is 100% polyester. 100 grams. Now I used about two balls um, of the baby snuggle for the body, the ears, and the tail. So two of these ones were enough um, for Mr. Boxalot. So 100 grams, 120 meters, or 131 yards, for those of you that use that sort of thing. It was a super bulky, a six. And although uh, Crystal's pattern recommended a five, um, I used this one and it turned out beautifully. I used instead of a six millimeter hook, which is recommended for this yarn, I did use a five uh, in the pattern. A five is also recommended. So I used two skeins of these or two balls of the six weight yarn using a five millimeter hook. So this was for the main part of the body for his little snout and his paws there you can see the paws i used oh i didn't tell you the color it's color number 19 color number 19 it's a very very beautiful blue green i don't know what it's called it's like a it's a teal dark teal blue green i don't know what it's very lovely so that was color 19 then I had this one for, like I said, the muzzle and the paws. Uh, this is color 30. Then for the eyes, um, I used, like I said, stuff I got from my Bella Coco boxes, Hibiscus Chunky. Uh, this was the one I used for the eyes. I don't know, they don't put the weights on these ones. I don't know why. What is a chunky? A five? Uh, so this one, I did go down one size for the eyes. So the eyes fit beautifully. Um, and this was just a random piece of pink. Um, I think this and the, the nose maybe was just yarn, full weight, random pieces of yarn I had uh, lying around because, I mean, you don't need an awful lot of it. The eyes which are those lovely sparkly safety eyes I got off Amazon. Uh, they're not very expensive. These ones, 30 millimeter safety eyes. So there you have it, folks. Mr. Box a lot. Adorable. You will love making him. Now, what I wanted to tell you to make him sit, I think Crystal in her pattern, she advised that on the inside that you glue some rocks I only put in a piece of fairly thick uh, felt. So I cut a piece of felt the size of the bottom, 
I inserted it uh, on the inside and my box a lot actually on a flat surface stands beautifully, it doesn't tip over at all. Um, so that's my tip. I had a piece of just nice thick felt sort of as a base on the inside, the size of the bottom. There you have it. Lovely pattern. Go check it out. You guys will love making it. Now I do want to make it in my favorite fingering weight Rainbow Cotton 84. Maybe it'll end up, hopefully, I'm um, seeing in my mind like a little backpack buddy. But I will let you know as soon as I have managed to make that. All right, you guys, on to the next thing. Now, the only other thing that I made in this entire time was, um, <laughs> no surprises here, a little bee. Now, the backstory on this bee, sometime during July, a bunch of designers had this uh, Christmas in July super pack of 40 patterns that you could buy for a very, very reduced price. So it was 90% discount almost on uh, like it was for a week or something that you could buy it. I can't even remember what the amount was. It, it really, for the patterns that you got, uh, it was a very, very good price. And of course, I cannot resist a good bargain when it comes to patterns. So I purchased the 40-pack uh, Christmas in July. And the main reason was for this guy. Now, I think mine did turn out slightly different from the pattern. Um, and I, I'll explain what I did. Now, he is very cute. He doesn't have a tail though, unless I missed it. Um, but this is him. He's supposed to be a little Christmas bee. Now, he comes, the pattern does come with a little Christmas tree that you can add on. But I think he needs something else. So either a, a Santa hat or, I don't know, I don't want to add the tree. So I think he needs a little Santa hat, but he is so cute and he was very easy to make. The only thing that I changed. Now, a lot of patterns tell you to read through the pattern from beginning to end before you start. The only reason I ever read through, and I do read through my patterns for the most part, before I start them. But the only reason I do this is to see where I can add a shortcut or two. Um, there are certain te techniques that I like and that I do not like. For instance, I don't like when you do a body and you have to um, divide the legs at the end. So when I do legs that are connected to the body, I like to start from the legs, connect the body and then end at the top of the head. So I very rarely, if a pattern and if I can at all possibly do it, I would do, I would reverse the pattern. So I would start at the legs, follow the pattern almost exactly, but work my way from the bottom, bottom up. Now for this guy, I read through the pattern and I saw that you did the head and the body was one piece, but all in brown. Then you crocheted a separate pants piece for him that you then put on top of, like you would put on pants on a toy. But then you sewed it to the body anyway. So I thought, now why with my very, very limited crochet time I had in between my family visiting, I was not going to do an unnecessary amount of loose pieces. So I did the head, but I stopped at the neck, fastened off. Then I started the body, but at the pants. So I started with white, red, white, red, all the way, just as the pattern suggested. Then I just connected the brown right where the pants ended, <laughs> continued the remaining amount of rows that you would have done for the body anyway. And then I sewed the neck and the body to each other, which is usually for me not a massive problem. Um, I prefer sewing if it's a fairly big item i honestly do prefer to sew the neck to the body um because i struggle if i have a very big piece and you have to start crocheting all year up in the air because you've got this big long thing hanging down folks i cannot do it i know a lot of people prefer heads bodies everything in one piece for the most part i will agree i do like that as well but for a big thing 
that sort of weighs my arms down. Nope, I don't do it. So <laughs> there you've got my little uh, tip on cheating a crochet pattern. I read through it to see where I can shortcut. Because if you're anyway going to work the pants to the body, why would you want two separate pieces? I mean, really. We've all got a million things we want to make. We all have a 10 mile long to-do list. Let's just get through as quick as we can. But still enjoy it. <laughs> it's not a chore. Sorry, it's now sounding like I'm rushing through things and I'm, I'm not enjoying what I'm doing. I love, love, love what I do. And this is why, where at all possible, I mean, try different things. Um, I think that's why I like experimenting with, that, with, with patterns. I like seeing what I can do. What's possible, what doesn't work, because a lot of the time, things just do not work. But folks, be brave. What are we here for? There you go. So my little Christmas bee, give me some suggestions. Do you also think he needs a hat? What do you think he needs to make him a little more festive? Because he is sort of, he's pre-festive, if I can call him that. He's, he's pre-festive. <laughs> now this guy was done in my favorite rainbow cotton 8-4. And like a caramel brown color, a beige, a white, and a red. And these little buttons, I think, came in the uh, one of the Bella Coco subscription boxes, the Crochet Society, or in the Advent Calendar, or something in that line. But these little bot buttons was from the Crochet Society boxes. All right, last thing. It's a purchase that I made that came in during the last two weeks. Um, I love crochet books. I will forever love them. Um, and I think because I love them, this is why... I'm down this vintage crochet pattern rabbit hole that I'm in um, because one day these books will be vintage. So I'm stocking up. Uh, I'm not letting my daughter, who currently has no interest in crochet, but I'm not bloody going to let her go through the struggle of trying to find 40 and 50 year old pattern books when uh, she's older. <laughs> I'm stocking up on them. So this one I got recently. A Hatik Omegurumi. Now this designer, you guys, I think is the one who in the recent uh, Omegurumi.com design contest, I think she was the winner. She's the lady who had that beautiful blue whale with the um, light tower on top of his back. So I think she was the winner um, of that design contest, the, the endangered animals one. So this is the book I just recently got. Um, it was on pre-order. It's got beautiful patterns in it. I wonder if there's a page with... And again, I didn't mark it. You'd think that I wouldn't by this time know to mark anything I want to show you. It doesn't look like, like they've got a um, thing with all the patterns in it. But anyway, this is the front. I'll show you two of my favorite designs. Uh, the one that I am definitely going to make because he is just screaming to me to make him is this cute little triton the walrus isn't he <laughs> just adorable i absolutely love him so here's one i'm gonna make another one i'm gonna make and i'll explain to you why it's not something i would have probably made if it wasn't for the name of the pattern uh, now th this pattern is called poirot the sawfish and folks, I am the biggest Agatha Christie fan. I've got all of her books. I think I've read all of them. I've seen a play. I visited the monument when we were in the UK once. I absolutely love Agatha Christie. So, of course, Poirot the Sawfish. For you, those of you who don't know Poirot, he is one of her main characters. He's a Belgian detective. And he's got this very distinct moustache um, and he always has that little monocle uh, or, or later I think uh, the, the one with the two sides the pince nez I don't know what you call it but you know the glasses that you pop onto your nose on both sides so this one oh we're all sawfish I will be making him all right you guys that is it for today 
uh, it was so much fun talking to you. Um, I'm glad to be sort of back after a two week uh, vacation with my family or two week holiday, two week break, visiting, it's always fun. But it is nice to be back to normal as well. Uh, so I'll be chatting to you guys very soon. There's a few very interesting things that's on the way. As you know, I've mentioned before, my vintage uh, Barbie crochet dress uh, pattern journey that's going to kick off as soon as I get my patterns. Um, I've got some, um, I've got a 23 non yarny things about me tag. Uh, my friend Caroline tagged me, so that video is coming up sometime soon. I've got some crochet kits that I want to have a look at, including a challenge involving a Danish crochet kit. So all of that, plus everything else that is on my list and that is coming in the next few weeks. So I cannot wait to sh share that with all of you guys. Um, keep on sending me emails. Oh, you people are sending me lovely, lovely patterns. Oh, I just love hearing from all of you, you know, all of my um yarny friends out there thank you so much for chatting to me thank you for sharing your projects with me thank you for suggesting projects to me you guys are awesome but i will chat to you next week have a very very lovely day um stay crafty stay safe bye <music>